The TL494 has a lot of nice features for water heating and today I want to talk about dead time control. This is pin number four. In most applications you see this grounded but you can control the dead time and this is that little portion down here. This TL494 board is set up so that it's running all the time except for these dead time portions. Now typically the dead time is about uh, two percent between one and one and three percent uh, when that pin is grounded uh, this one is one point three percent and what you can do is you can increase the voltage on this pin and it's not a lot uh, we're only at uh, you know around two point four point uh, point two four volts to get the ten percent dead time that we want and so what we have is uh, 1.1 milliseconds of dead time and then the whole cycle time is 11.1 .1 milliseconds. That gives you about 10 percent and you can do that with a simple voltage divider, a 10K and 510 ohm resistor. Uh, you connect the high side to the 5 volts, pin 14, which is regulated. And if you notice, uh, if you multiply by 2, uh, 20K and 1K uh, is a convenient uh, pair of resistors to use. Now, uh, you'll see these often in uh, motor speed controls. So right now I have this uh, pot. I can vary it. Now this is the minimum dead time. And I have this only set up for about... 1.2 volts or something like that. So this gives you about 30 40 percent dead time and it can go up to uh, the full 100 percent if you want. So it makes a nice speed control uh, just by using that little pin and setting up the op amps so this thing runs continuously. Uh, if you have any long leads uh, I suggest you put a capacitor at the chip because this line will pick up noise and uh, you'll get ringing at the, the transitions. So to, get, to gain that 1 point, uh, to 1.1 millisecond off time and an 11.1 millisecond uh, cycle time, you need to use this uh, capacitor resistor combination, a 15N or 0.015 microfarads if you're an old guy and a one mega ohm resistor. These things are just multiples of each other so you can go and use different values. Uh, this is what I had that was convenient. And another thing uh, I want to demonstrate is that uh, the TL494 has a low voltage lockout. I'm not really happy with it because this was the, this chip was designed back when uh, there was, wasn't even an idea of FETs. Let's see, it gets this up about. It's typically around 6.5 volts. Yeah, so it just came on at 6.5. Typically it was designed for use with transistors. Uh, FETs weren't even thought of at the time. and I like to put at least uh, 10 volts on a FET to drive it. Now why this is uh, useful for uh, water heaters is that uh, a water heater is designed for normal AC operation and the thermostats will burn out the contacts if you use them on DC. What this circuit does is it guarantees that every so often around 10 milliseconds there will be an, an interruption in the current and so that guarantees that the arc doesn't go on for more than 10 milliseconds and it takes about one millisecond to uh, quench the arc so that that's the reason for this timing cycle and this allows you to uh, use the mechanical contacts of the uh, water heater and only run two wires to it so there's a lot of convenience there because you always have that dead time, 
you'll want to design the water heater element for about 10% higher 10% uh, higher current than uh, which, which would be optimal for just connecting to the panel itself. Uh, the reason is you have this dead time and when you're at uh, partial duty cycles it still is the same efficiency but when you get up towards 100 percent duty uh, these things won't turn on all the time and so you really can't store the energy in a capacitor to uh, use later so at the lower frequencies you need a little bit bigger capacitor bank and uh, the resistance should be lower of the heating elements to uh, allow for taking extra current from the capacitor. So if you have 10 amp panels, design your heating element to work on 11 amps. But this can be very useful and uh, it, it makes wiring simpler. Uh, another thing I suggest is that when you uh, use these on a water heater such as the lower element. The upper element, if you notice, it'll have a little red dot on it that has an extra switch. It's an over temperature switch and it mechanically opens up in the event of over temperature and you have to make physically uh, reset it. And you should use the same type of switch on the lower uh, so that uh, if there should be some overheating situation it uh, won't just continue uh, powering the heating element say if you have a FET that shorts out or something. It's not a super big deal because the main worry is on the upper element that you boil away a bunch of water and the element is exposed so you want to turn off before that happens. The lower element there's really too much water to boil off and typically you don't have enough solar energy to uh, even get the tank to boiling. Uh, it takes a lot of energy to get you up to first 60 degrees and then from 120 up to 180 that's a whole bunch more panels that you need. So uh, I'll be talking about some of the other features of the TL494 uh, later but this one with dead time is uh, pretty handy.